Shall we conquer the world today, my rogue army? My name is Erin Rogoff, I am your host, and welcome to my booktube channel. So, today's pretty rainy, if you can hear the rain outside, and today is just the perfect day to sit back, relax, and read a good book. That is what I've been doing all morning, and that's what I'm going to be doing all afternoon. And I can only stay away from Barnes & Noble for so long, as you can tell from the many books in my room. And with that being said, I have another part to my January 2020 book haul. And this is part two of I have no idea how many book hauls I can go with, but let's start this video with Earth to Charlie by Justin Olson. This is a young adult fiction contemporary romance LGBT novel, and it's a standalone. And Justin Olson has no other books besides this one currently, but even though I'm already reading this, I can already tell that I want a book too because reasons. If you read it, you can t you can definitely create your own reasons, too. As for the summary, a high school outcast named Charlie spends his life hoping to be abducted by aliens, then meets easygoing Seth, who shows him what real friendship is, and shows him that he isn't the only one feeling like an alien among a world of humans. This is a coming-of-age novel about finding yourself in a strange world, and considering I always felt like the alien and the outcast in high school, I thought this book would really speak to me. So I've been reading it all night, and I'm so, so loving it. As for readings, Amazon rates the book a 4.4 out of 5 stars, and Goodreads rates the book a 3.7 out of 5 stars. And if you know me, you know that if I go on goodreads.com, all I do is look at the books and then add them to my want to read list. So it's kind of uh, about 4,500 some odd books right now, and it's only growing. There's no hope for me to finish all of them, but I've almost reached reading a thousand books, so I'm going to have a party when that happens. Moving on. One can only be abducted by aliens if they don't want to go with them. Y'all can guess from my obsession with Star Trek that I want to travel the stars with my off-worlder friends. Where is my starship when I need it? Those humans at Area 51 stole my spaceship when I came here 22 years ago. I need to get it back, but I don't know how. Anyway, another book that I got that I have had my eye on for a really long time is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a young adult fiction, mystery, contemporary literature novel. It's another standalone, and this is the first of Courtney Summers' books that I have, and I'm definitely going to be getting more of her books because I'm really enjoying this one, too. And as for a few other books that she has, Cracked Up to Be, All the Rage, and Fall for Anything. Those are three books that are now on my uh, birthday present wish list, which is coming up on February 1st, which is actually my Nana's birthday and her mom's birthday, too. So three generations, minus my mom, of February 1st birthdays, which I think is pretty cool and astronomically almost impossible, but it happened. Moving on to Sadie again. Sadie hasn't exactly had the easiest life from growing up on her own and raising her sister Maddie, but when Maddie is found dead, Sadie is determined to find her sister's killer and get justice after a botched police investigation. So will radio personality West McRae help Sadie on her journey for justice before it's too late, or will he abandon her like the police did amid... Uh, Maddie's murder. As for ratings, Barnes & Noble rates the book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Goodreads rates the book a 4.2 out of 5 stars. And 96% of Google users enjoyed this book. So I am definitely trusting those odds, or whatever they are, ratings. And I'm going to be making my own rating and review for it too. And another book that I have is Tricks by Ellen Hopkins. If you haven't known, I am obsessed with Ellen Hopkins' writing. I have nothing bad to say about it, except I always want more. Give me more of the Tricks duology. Anyway, this is a young adult fiction, poetry, contemporary fiction novel. Not really a novel, as it is like 600 some odd pages. But this is written in free verse, 
and it's such a quick read and I love how there's like a poem within the poem itself which is so cool and I love that style of writing and actually that has affected my own writing style whenever I write poetry and if you know me you know that I'm pretty open that I have depression and whenever I'm feeling like really really depressed like okay what's gonna happen that's gonna send me over the edge not that that actually happens but like the over the edge bit but whenever I feel really depressed I always go to writing poetry or painting and then it becomes like my best masterpiece like oh my gosh it is so good and I don't know how I can grasp that talent and then keep it whenever I'm feeling normal and happy moving on with tricks it is such a good series. Oh my gosh, I have nothing bad to say about it. But the other books that I have by Ellen Hopkins are Crank, Glass, Fallout, and People Kill People. And in Tricks, five teens from different parts of the country search for freedom, safety, family, and love. However, those powerful words, I love you, are all said for the wrong reasons. So can they find the right reasons? As for ratings, Barnes & Noble writes the book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Goodreads rates the book a 4.3 out of 5 stars, and 92% of Google users enjoyed this book. I would like to be a part of that Google users and make it a 93% because I love Ellen Hopkins' books. I have breezed right through them all, and I have nothing but respect for Ellen Hopkins. And then the final book that I have is Rumble, also by Ellen Hopkins. And you can tell I've been reading this too. I'm like a, what is it called? The, um, not polytheistic. I'm a not a polyamorous, poly whatever reader. What is it called? Oh my gosh, I'm, it's like that mean thing, like the type of reader that you are. I don't even remember what it was, but I'm the type of reader who reads multiple books at a time and never gets the storylines mixed up. It's like a polyamorous reader because you love different books at the same time. Moving on, with Rumble. It is a standalone and I, it's kind of about like, religion and atheism and broken families and this is just a very interesting book. I'm very intrigued by it. Barnes & Noble rates the book a 4.3 out of 5 stars. Common Sense Media rates the book a 4 out of 5 stars. And Goodreads also rates the book a 4 out of 5 stars. And with this book focusing on religion and atheism and broken families, my family isn't broken, but it is very mixed. I'm not really getting into that, but my mom is Catholic and my dad is Jewish. And my brother, I'm not going to talk about him because that's private and his own thing. But I have a strange relationship with religion. I mean, I am very intrigued by different religions just to know what other people believe. And look who we have here. We have my favorite little visitor and co-star. Anyway, this is my dog, Lacey, if you haven't known. And anyway, I should be getting back to the book. I have a strange relationship with religion because I don't necessarily want to be a part of a religion that that protects the shepherds protecting the shepherds instead of their flock of sheep. So take that as philosophically as you will, okay? Anyway, I need to give this puppy a walk and I need to feed her breakfast. So if you enjoy this video, hit that like button to show some support. Subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this. And have a great day, everyone.